Judith, I want to ask you about courage um, because you, you know, we all have, we all face moments in our lives where we have to do something that we may not think of as courageous. Maybe we think it's crazy or reckless, but but it has to happen. And one of the things that, that you had to do or it was you were a star on One Life to Live. You won two daytime Emmys. You, you, you knew and people were telling you that, including your husband who you met on set there, um, that you should go to L.A. But you had to mm-hmm. quit. You had to leave that show. You had... You were a star. You had a steady career. You were doing well. You were probably, you know, finally making enough money to mm-hmm. to live okay. And you quit. You had to quit with no yeah. safety net. I mean, you were going to mm-hmm. just go to L.A. and 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 um. And were you nervous about that decision? Were you were you worried that it might actually be disastrous? For sure, absolutely. I thought. Have I lost my mind? And of course, my mother said, <laughs> "You've lost your mind." I mean, she was like, "What are you? What are you? What are you thinking? What are you? What are you? What are you doing?" Yeah. But Robert said to me, "My husband, Robert, your said, husband, do you yeah. only want to do this? What if you never took a chance?" What if you never found out what else you could have done with your life and you stayed for the security of all of it? And he said, when will you, when will you take a leap of faith that you will be held, you will, something will come? That's what I said to you before. It's like, I don't always see it working, but I know it's working. You know, there are these things, underground springs that are always, that are always there. They're always working. And so I just, I remember sitting in Joe Stewart's office and signing the papers that said that I would leave. The Joe producer Stewart was of, the, yeah, the showrunner of, of, of One, One Life to Yeah, the yeah. producer. And, and you said, I'm leaving. And did he say you're crazy? He didn't say I was crazy. I think they were... I mean, she was such a prominent character. I think it was, you know, they, they of course, they wanted yeah. me to stay on. Um, but I, I think he knew that I was resolved and that goes back to the women of power and voice in my family of like, wait, wait, I can, I can do this and I must do this. And I knew I had Robert's support. And my manager at the time, Herb Hampshire, who has now since passed, Herb... Herb said, "You, you uh, I agree with Robert. You, you really, you need to do this. You need to, you need to go. You need to go." Um, and I also knew that I could have come back. They, they made that very, they made that very clear to me. So, th- in a way, there was some kind of safety net. But I knew I didn't, I didn't want to have to do that. I knew that I, I wanted to expand the level of my work and the and the reach of the people that I could reach. Because it's it's also about the audience for me. It's also about th- that incredible support that I've gotten over the years. Just really, truly, really r- remarkable and stunning. I mean, you had this audience of mm-hmm. daytime soap watchers. Um, probably, I would imagine at that time, more women than men. Probably overwhelmingly. Uh, but maybe not. A lot of I, men I just used to come up to me, you know, heads that, of corporations that I would meet later when yeah. I was doing a lot of this different, <laughs> you know, charity work that I was doing for the LGBTQ yeah. uh, community. And these these heads of corporations would come up to me and say, don't tell anybody, but I used to close my office door when you, <laughs> the show was on and watch the show. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like, so you don't have to be in the closet. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I understand that, but it was it was always funny to me, but it was a lot of men, a lot of men. Yeah. But you had a very, I mean, an audience that knew you as Karen and, and knew you as a mm-hmm. dramatic actor. Uh-huh. You go to L.A. and it would take some time for you to land a role, which would become a massive role for you. And the, the role that I first remember you in um, as a kid, which was Who's the Boss? A comedy, a comedic role. Um, totally. Was it from your perspective? I mean, it's, you know, talking about building a brand new audience, which you did. 
right? A completely new audience of people who had not did not know Karen Wolick. Um, and you had to become a comedic actor. You had to be, had to go from this actor who could cry on command. I mean, amazing, right? <laughs> it was right? really, I have to and say, it's really hard. Everybody like, goes, oh, it looks so easy. No, it's really, it's really it's hard. <laughs> and yeah. then to become Angela, who this sort of high-powered, but also, you know, she's, she's, she's joke. She's telling jokes. <laughs> she's making, you know, she's saying things that audiences are going to laugh at. How did you, how did you begin to kind of shift in 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 kind of embodying that character and becoming this character, it's my training. That's what I tr- was trained to do. I mean, I was in repertory theater for four and a half years. I played all different kinds of roles. So the you you work on the role. You don't work to make it funny. You know, it's like people say, "Oh, you're a dramatic actress." You don't work to make it dramatic. You don't work to make it funny. Yeah. You you. You play the character. But you have to become the character, too. I mean, they give you the character on paper, but you actually have to animate it. And Angela was high-powered, you know, corporate boss. She was the head of a household. I mean, there was all these things that you had to bring yes, out in Yes, but her. I have to find them all in myself. I have to, I have to, I have to find that. I know the, you know, I know the, the, the places where I have power. I also know the places where I have vulnerability. But each character is their own treasure chest of stuff for you to discover, and you bring it forward. Plus, you have great scripts. I mean, when I read the script and it was called "You're the Boss" at the time, I was like, "This is remarkable." What a remarkable story about a family. And it was just at the the cusp of women in the workplace. Um, a lot of things were changing. A lot of, you know, the, the world was shifting. Plus, I had one of the world's greatest comedic actors in Tony Danza who helped me, who supported me. How did he, he, would, do, how did he help you? Tell me about that. He taught me how to hold for a laugh that was one of the best lessons I've ever, ever learned. There was this one moment we were doing this scene, and I was talking. It was like, I can't remember if he was behind me or next to me. And the audience went berserk. I mean, they went crazy. And he kept saying, hold, hold. Hold. So I knew, I learned from him how long I could hold for uh, for a laugh, and it was not a lesson that I had ever known before. And I would watch him. I saw how he embodied the character and how he put himself into it, and how he never. It was never about the joke. It was always about the substance of something. And he would always say to me, you know, there's humor in even the saddest um, situations. We did a show about him. He's such a good actor. He's such a fine actor. And he, we were doing a scene about, it was a show about his father dying. And it, 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 it. There was so much humor to be mined. And we also had a great director in Asad Kalata. And the rest of the the characters on the show, I mean, you know, Danny Pintar, Alyssa Milano, and Catherine Hellman. It was just um, – and Catherine. I learned so much about comedy from Catherine as well. So, you know, you're you're talking about – it isn't like overnight I said, ah, now I'm so funny. You know, it was like – and when I went into audition for it, I – I ended up reading the entire script for the writers because I thought it was so good. And I kept saying, can I read this scene? Can I read this scene? Can I read this scene? Mm-hmm. I was never I was never going for a joke. I was always going for, for the character. And if you really look at Angela Bauer, she was one of the most – one of the funniest things about her was how earnest she was. She was so earnest. It was yes. like – so it was right. absurd. Right. Right. I mean, she would put herself in these situations and it was like she was so extreme. So – that, that's also all part and parcel of it. Those were the pieces that made it what it was. If you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire episode, click right here. <laughs>